Okay, today we're going to talk about changing the gas valve on a water heater. Although this is a relatively simple task, I'll be first and foremost with safety. This is a task that I recommend by uh, a certified technician and not necessarily by the homeowner, but we will walk through the steps of what is necessary, this to educate you and to uh, make it helpful for you when you do call your certified technician out. First thing we do is safety. Safety is first. With this, we shut the gas off at the gas valve, external gas valve that's past the gas valve that runs the water heater. There's a redundant gas valve here, it's called a gas cock. We shut this into the off position. If it's 90 degrees from the pipe, it's in the off position. As you can see, this one forms a T against the pipe, that means it's off. What this does is it shuts the gas flow off to the unit, which eliminates the pilot light and shuts it down completely. Now remember that when you're coming into something like this, you're also typically dealing with a whole lot of hot water that has a potential of being a scald hazard that you need to be aware of. So the first thing you wanna do after you shut your gas off is go ahead and hook your hose up to the drain valve. Now before you shut any valves off anywhere else, you go ahead and you get your screwdriver and you, this one has this particular kind of a valve that's a screwdriver valve. What you do is you get in there and you commence to twisting and you let some of the sediment out of the water heater while you're doing this because it'll create kind of a double process for you. And it also blows the valve out so it won't plug up with other garbage that may be in the bottom of your water heater before you shut your water off. After you've got that and you've got a nice flow of water, you go ahead, you come to the top of the tank and on your cold water side, you'll have a cold water shut off. And you simply take, this is a 90 degree valve and turn 90 degrees from the valve. This shuts the water flow off coming into the unit. If your, your unit doesn't have one of these, you need to call a certified guy to come out and put one on for you because this is a safety feature that you need to have installed. The next step that you do after your, after your tank is empty is remove the cover. Make sure that this is all cool enough for you to work with. If it is not, stop, wait a while, let it cool off. The next thing that we do is get our crescent wrench and we disconnect the lines below. There are three separate lines, one a pilot line, the next a gas, the main gas line. The third is a thermocouple, which is a sensor that lets the unit know that it's proving flame and that it's okay to go ahead and turn on the big flame. Um, it's just one that works off of the pilot itself. So what you do is you remove all three, remembering that the center one, especially if it's on a propane, will be reverse thread. So you will have to spin it the other direction as opposed to the standard on-off direction. So be aware of that because you can mess the gas valve up and, and other things. Once again, if you're not comfortable with this, you should get a certified technician out. After we get those three lines removed, we come over, we remove, our gas line that's hooked in by simply threading this off. Remember our gas is off now so there's no hazard in this. Now with all of that removed, these are tough to, tough to get out. It's not real, real easy. And you have the potential of bending and breaking things if you don't really know what you're doing. So basically you get a really big wrench, you go across the top of it, make sure it's tight enough that it's not gonna hurt anything and you spin it off, you thread it out. And after you're done threading it out, remember the tank is empty, you look in there to see if there's any kind of big sediment buildup. If there is, it's strongly recommended that you think about replacing the water heater itself. A good recommendation is, is if there is a problem with the gas valve, it's a good idea to think about replacing the whole tank itself. But these are pieces and parts that can be switched out. Now, what we do is just re-thread the new one in. It'll thread in in a clockwise manner. What you do is you get it hand tight and then you go ahead and give it another spin around. Don't get it super, super tight in there because it's something that, that will uh, tear up uh, if you get it super tight in there. Plus you can crush the valve and many different things that you can do if you do this. Once again, I'd recommend that you get a certified guy in to, to do this. And then you simply hook the thermocouple back in Hook your main tube in, actually you hook your main tube in first because it's the biggest and easiest to get a wrench on when you do that and then you hook the thermocouple and then you hook your uh, pilot tube in and then go ahead, you install, reinstall your nipple that you pulled out of the other one before you got done. You tighten this in and this is a flare fitting 
There should be no Teflon tape or uh, pipe dope on this fitting that's a flare fitting. When I say flare, you can see how it's coned out and how the inside of that is coned in. Those just set against each other and just, just the metal itself is what sets it up. So what you do is you get it to where it's snug with your hand, then you take your wrench, and as you'll watch, you'll see this tighten, and then you'll watch this start to spin. Then you stop. So here we go. That's tight enough. You don't need to make that any tighter. That won't leak. It's a good idea to always double check yourself with soap bubbles when you're done doing this, just to make sure that you have no gas leaks at all. And if you do, call your certified technician, shut your gas back off. To finish this up, you turn the gas on and you're ready to light your pilot light. You have your doors off, so it's time to light the pilot light.